Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be taking a look at the Transformers Legacy Deluxe Class Crankcase. Let's start off by taking the packaging, and then we will get into the review. So of course, up front we have the Legacy logo, Transformers on the side, we have Crankcase and a Decepticon symbol. We do have a really, a really nice picture of him in his car mode with a really cool blaster up top. We have an open window displaying him in the packaging. On the side we do have two uh, really nice artwork shots, one a close-up of his face, and a really nice zoomed out picture with the two blasters included. And at the back he transforms in 14 steps, a really nice barcode to scan to show his stats. We have Crankcase with the Decepticon symbol, two product shots, one of the car, and Robot with his two blasters. And on the final side, the classic Decepticon artwork for Legacy, and that is pretty much it for the packaging, so let's now get into the review. Here we have Crankcase in his vehicle mode. Let's take a look at the details, starting at the very front with that grill section. Some really nice silver for the headlights with this really cool hook and wire section. Of course, it doesn't actually do anything. It's just a really nice surface detail that adds quite a bit of character and detail to the vehicle, which I actually really, really do like. If we go to the side here, unfortunately, the front wheels are mushroom peg, but it doesn't bother me that much. There's the entire mirror and window section overall looking very nice, really tinted blue and black for the mirror. We actually do have this whole canister section in the back which is pretty cool. You could probably imagine he's packing Energon or fuel or something, which is pretty cool. And the back wheel is not a mushroom peg, which is always nice, with some really nice silver for the inner part and some black for the tire itself. And I'm really glad how they did the tire. Actually, looks very realistic. There's the little indents in the tire like it is in today, which is pretty cool. I'm not sure how to describe that, but it's pretty cool and realistic. I'm not a big fan of this hinge section here. So this, is, of course, is a repaint remold of Skids or Burnout. And, of course, their, this door design is completely different from theirs, but they had a hinge. Of course, the door could hinge, and you could position it in the robot mode and vehicle mode how you wish, but it wasn't like this. So I really wish they had done that, like, with skids on this, because this huge, ugly hinge here, I'm not a big fan of it. It kind of juts out the side, a little bit ugly in my opinion, so I think they could have done better, because they have done better on the previous two versions. Another section I've heard people complain about is this whole gap here, which actually that is there for a reason, so I'm not bothered by that. It's actually there due to transformation so there is a gap there because this is actually the back of the head so there needs to be clearance for the head to fold in and out for transformation so I'm not bothered by that this I know they can do better because they have done better on the other side of course the same details are repeated and on the back there is actually a spare tire which is a pretty cool little design trait with some nice silver um and turquoise blue and black for the tire itself. There's this whole fin section here. You can actually see the license plate area. And there's four exhaust pipes, two on each side. So there's a lot of little details on this car that I actually really do like. Rolls pretty well. Another minor complaint, which is really just tolerances. This could just be a my copy type of thing. Unfortunately, the door and the back section don't really want to tab in. They look like they stay, and you can probably hear a click there, but it never really wants to stay tabbed together. There's a little bit of a gap, but that does not bother me that much. Much. And of course I'm going to get to accessories after the comparisons just to keep them out of the way There is actually already one attached because it's really a part of the car It's this whole grill section it actually does form into a gun for the robot which I'll cover in a little bit So I just want to let you know there is one already on here because it is really a part of the car But let's now get down to some mold comparisons here. He is with the original version skids as you can see, the overall look do look very cool next to each other. And of course, if you're wondering what lines these come from, this one's from Legacy Wave 3, a deluxe class figure. This is from Legacy Wave 1, also a deluxe class figure. And I will bring out Burnout in just a sec, which is a Walmart exclusive from the Legacy Velocitron line Wave 1. And of course, comparison-wise, as you can see, the front section here is completely brand new sculpted. Of course, this is an accessory, but you can consider a part of the figure if you want to. The entire windscreen section is a completely brand new new piece. As you can see, more of a square with this one, more of a long rectangle. The entire mirror design is actually completely different. Well, much more small on skids, much longer on this version. And the entire door design, again, they could have done so much better. So with this figure, actually, the door opens this way with this figure it opens up, but I still think they could have done a much smaller hinge like they did on skids than this huge big section here, which I think is very, very ugly. Another similarity is actually the front wheels for both figures have mushroom peg, but I would have preferred if they did a color style like skids where all of it is black and not some of it is black and some of it is sil as silver, because it really just makes that mushroom peg a lot more obvious um, than it needs to be. Another mold change, as you can see, this entire canister box section on the back section is not present on skids or burnout which I will bring out in just a sec 
but if you do flip to the back, the only difference back here is the newly added spare wheel, but everything else is the exact same way. As you can see, that whole fin section. If you do flip to the top, there is some differences. They actually have a window up here. This one does not, but overall, that is pretty much the differences and similarities for skids and crankcase. And of course, all of that applies to burnout because the only difference between skids and burnout is the head sculpt in the robot mode, but in the vehicle, they are the exact same thing, just a color change. But let me bring out him for a three mold comparison. Here we have all of them together, and I think they do look very cool. Let me know of these three, which one do you like the most in the comment section down below? Of course, you might kind of mix up. You might like one vehicle more than the other, but in the robot mode, you might like a different one. Um, it really just depends. Um, which one's my favorite? I'm not really sure. There's some components of each of them that I really do like. I really do like the whole new gimmick of the blaster forming into a grill section. I think that's actually really uh, creative and uh, something we really haven't seen before. I also really do like the turquoise and the Decepticon symbol on the hood. I actually really do like that. But there is a few things I don't like about Crankcase and there's a few things I don't like about Skids and um, Burnout. But um, they overall do look very cool. I do also have another complaint about the worth of this item because all of these are priced about 25 to 26 dollars really depending where you buy it um but they're all the same price they're all deluxes but this one only comes at two when these figures come at three they both come with the axe the energon infused axe and the two blasters there's a single barreled and a double barreled uh they're the exact same thing for both these this one only comes with the front grill section and the single barreled so i'm not really sure why it has one less accessory i would have wouldn't have minded if it came with the energon axe or the double barreled blaster i think that would have been a really good addition so it just thinks just seems a little bit cheap of them that it's kind of getting ripped off when these two aren't that is another complaint of mine but a minor one overall i don't think it ruins the figure i think it just looks a little bit odd compared to these other two that it does come with less but they overall do look very cool next to each other here's a side view if you want to see and again, as you can see, these are pretty much the exact same figure, just a color rechange. But I will bring these two out for comparison when they're in their robot mode. And that is pretty much it for the comparison. So let me just quickly go over how the accessories are implemented. So as I mentioned before, the other two come with three accessories, the Energon Infused Axe, the Double Barrel Blaster, and of course the Single Pistol, which is this one right here, and it comes with him. So this can just be stored up top like that, which I think overall looks okay. I honestly think this should have come with another accessory, either the Energon Axe or the Double Barrel Blaster, either them or another brand new accessory. I think that would have been pretty cool and it's for the new accessory which is the whole grill section so how this is uh, stored and implemented into the car is there is a post here and a port right there and that just plugs right into place and how you transform it into the blaster is you flip the section down it reveals the pegs or the barrel and here you have the blaster which you can really determine either view you want to show you could say this is the side you want to show or you can show the car side I typically will show this side I think that looks more like a gun than this side. That is just my opinion. Unfortunately, it does kind of give away that it's a blaster um, when you have it in the grill mode. The peg is right here. I wish that could have been a little bit better concealed if they had put like a panel to cover this bottom section because that does give it away. Everything else is actually pretty um, concealed. You can barely even tell it's an accessory, but when you look at the front, you can tell there's something sticking out right there. But everything else overall looks pretty flush with the car, and I think it actually really works. That's a really cool creative feature that I quite like in my opinion. I, know I, underst I do understand some people don't like it. That's just your opinion. I think it really works. But that is pretty much it for the vehicle mode. Let's now get down to transformation into the robot mode. Now for transformation into the robot mode, what you're going to want to do is remove the entire grill section. You can then get this piece, flip this down, and there we have the blaster. We can also put that out to the side right now. Then you can go to the side, flip these sections out like that. And if, you're, if your figure is like my copy where the doors don't tab into place, then you can easily move it up. But if it is, there is, of course, a tab here that goes right into that slot. So you just untab that. You can flip these up just like that. You can then get the legs. These will just hinge down, untab this entire section from the top as you can see there's tabs on the legs the back of the legs and there's slots on the inside of this piece you're going to then get the entire waist section which you might have to move the arms down just to get some added clearance you're going to get the entire waist which is on a hinge which was folded up inside this section here as you can see so you can hinge that down you can then split at the legs fold these panels up like this 
and then what you can do is fold up the wheel, fold up the wheel, which can be a bit tight, there we go, tab those into place like that, and there we have the legs all done, and then you can bring the arms out like this. And then how the arms were tabbed into place is there is a hook and there is a slot on the bottom of the arm. Then what you're going to want to do is push the head through that gap like this. You can then reposition the arms like this. And there we go. We can then go to the backpack. You can fully put the doors back. And then there is a tab. There's tabs here. And there are slots on this entire back section right here. And that will just tab into place. As for these newly uh, molded blasters, which were not present on skids or burnout, you can just position these however you wish. I like to have them there like that, which does not look too bad. And there we have Crankcase in his robot mode. Let's now take a look at the details. Here we have Crankcase in his robot mode. Let's take a look at the details. Starting at the very top with that head sculpt, some really nice orange for the face and the entire visor section with some really nice glossy blue plastic for the helmet section. We do have this entire plate on the back of the head, which doesn't bother me. As I said before, of course, the back of the head is actually the hood section with the Decepticon symbol, which is upside down, which is kind of funny. And of course, if we go to the chest section, really nice layer effect going to the stomach done in silver with some really nice blue for this entire chest section. And this is where the uh, port is for the whole grill section, which you can store there if you want to, or you can have it act as a weapon. If you go to the shoulder, I actually really do like how you can see bits and pieces of the car sticking out, like the wheels at the shoulders. That looks pretty cool. And they're really nice, kind of almost cam canisters design. Actually, as you can see, they sort of replicated this whole streak design on the canister and put it on the shoulder, which is pretty cool. I'm not sure if that was their intent, but it does look like that to me. With some really nice gray for the hand and the bicep. Also some blue for the form, and if we go down to the legs with some really nice gray for the crotch and waist, and quite a bit of paneling detailing. As you can see, if you flip to the side, we can actually see the entire mirror section or windscreen section on the side of the leg with the whole canister section we saw before, where you can, again, use your imagination, sh saying he's storing like ammunition, energon, fuel, something like that, which is overall pretty cool. And if we flip to the back, there is a bit of cable on the back, the backpack here, which on um, the doors, of course, there is, a, there is a bit of customization. You can have them fully collapsed or out like that for more of a dynamic pose if you want to have them flat, which is what I typically do. Also, they actually do have a new component with these newly added blasters, which I'm actually really glad. I honestly did not know that was a part of this figure before I got in hand. I watched several reviews and I never noticed that before, which is a pretty cool addition that they added, which they really didn't need to. They could have just sculpted some new pieces of the car, a new head sculpt, a new accessory, and just left those out, but I'm really glad they included those. That's actually a pretty cool addition. Let's now get down to articulation, so the head can move up and down, tilt side to side, and of course move side to side. The blasters can also move up and down as well. Just make sure you don't get them caught down there, because that can be a pain. You have to open up the backpack and push them up. As for the arm, of course, there is a hinge out and in, of course, all the way around. Sometimes you will untab the chest to make sure you have a good grip on it as well as, of course, a butterfly joint, which is a bit different. There is a bicep rotation and elbow bends, wrist rotation. Let me just get the arms out of the way. There is also waist rotation fully. And also, of course, the leg can kick that far forward, that far back. Of course, a knee bends, a swivel. There is a full out to the side kick, so pretty much the full splits, a nice pivot. And that is pretty much it for the articulation. Overall, pretty standard for a deluxe size figure. I would say it's roughly the same as Skids. Of course, there is actually a newly added uh, butterfly joint, which is pretty nice. And of course, the backpack, again, if you want to, you can slightly customize how you position the doors. You can have them out, so the guns, again, you can slightly position those a bit different because the backpack, again, was very different on Skids and Burnouts. But overall, a very good looking robot mode, in my opinion. Let's now get down to the accessories. So, of course, the first one is the blaster, which you can put in his hand, which overall looks pretty cool. I actually really do like the kind of see-through, gray, foggy look they have to the blaster, which is a blaster piece compatible. 
Also, the next accessory is the hood or the blaster kind of grill piece. So again, if you want, so you can have this attached to the car or the front of the chest, which I can do right now if you want to. So if you want more of a different look, more of car bits sticking out, you can do something like that. I don't even think they showed that in the instructions or the box, but you know, your toy, you can do what you wish, which I actually kind of like that look. The only thing I don't like is the peg sticking out. Again, that kind of gives away the whole secret weapon look, but you can do that if you want. Or, of course, the main intent of this mode was to flip the section down and have it act as a blaster, which I think looks just okay. It's not the best blaster in the world, which you can really display this however you wish. You can have this as the front of the blaster, which I think does look a little bit better. I think it look, does look a little bit weird with the headlights being there, um, but overall, it's an interesting weapon, which I actually kind of do like. No, it's not the perfect gimmick or weapon, but I think it's creative, and it kind of uh, has its own twist, which definitely surprised me. You know, when they were first revealing this character, I was like, wait, what? His grill becomes a blaster? I've never even seen that before, so I thought that was pretty creative and cool, and a, a nice surprise that I was not expecting. But that is pretty much it for the weapons. Overall, pretty cool. Of course, he does not have three this time. No Energon-infused weapon, unless they're trying to say the grill piece, or this one is an Ener Energon-infused, but I don't think so. But, um... You can say this if you want to, but that's pretty much it for the robot. Let's now get down to some molt comparisons. Here he is with skids and burnouts. Let me just make sure they're all in the same shot. Let me just zoom out a little bit. I do apologize if there's some glare. There's silver on some of the people's faces, so it does kind of blow them out a little bit. But as you can see, mold-wise, um, they're actually very, very different. The head sculpt is completely different. Um from all three of them. Of course, some of them have a bit of similarities. As you can see, they all have a bit of a whole back head plate, which some people don't like, um, which is understandable. As you can see, of course, the accessories, the whole grill piece is a brand new one. As for the single pistol that is present in all three, the legs, pretty much the entire bottom half of the figure is the exact same, minus, of course, the whole side piece. That new canister section is newly added, but the front of the legs, that is pretty much the exact same as you can see in the shoulder section that is also a new piece but between these two um, that is the exact same as I said before of course skids and burnout are the exact same figure just that head sculpt the front of the head is a new piece as you can see, the entire door section is a completely different story for a crankcase. They're folded back when these are in a different position. So um, definitely quite a bit of changes, which is super cool. Um, you know, um, some people don't like repaints at all, but this is a very heavy, extensive repaint that I think some people might not even be able to tell is a reuse of skids or um, burnout. Some people might not even uh, have noticed when this was first revealed or when they got in hand, which is actually pretty cool. So overall, uh, looking very cool next to each other. Let me know in the comment section down below which one is your favorite. I'm still undetermined, not really sure. I think I like some things about some of them. There's some things I don't like as much, but overall, I think they're pretty solid releases that I highly suggest to get. And the great thing is, um, I usually do this whenever there is a huge, large collection of molds, you know, three or four. It's typically best, in my opinion, that the majority of the molds are easy to get. And actually, that's really good, because both these are mainline, and only one of them is exclusive. And I would be perfectly fine if they made another version, because I think it's a pretty good molding pen, in my opinion. Of course, there is some complaints, um... About the skids mold, the main complaint when that figure originally came out was the huge hollowness in the legs, which I do agree is pretty bad, but I'm typically not that picky with hollowness. I do agree it's bad, but I would never say it's something uh, bad enough to not get the figure over. I think it's still a good figure worth getting, just overlooking that. But that's pretty much it for this mold comparison. Let's now get down to some other Wave 3 uh, Legacy comparisons. Here he is with Point Blank and a Peacemaker, which I recently did get. Of course, a review coming soon. I also was actually able to snag Skullgrin, and that review is coming soon. I'm so looking forward to that figure. That's going to be probably one of my top 10 favorite figures in my collection. That one's going to be awesome, but they do look pretty cool next to each other. Taking him off to the side. Now for one final Legacy Wave 3 comparison. Here he is with our modest star scream and his review also inferno's review is up on the channel right now so if you missed that make sure you go check that out after this review and they do look very cool next to each other and i'm almost completed with um we three all i need now is dragon megatron and dead ends and that is it so pretty exciting and that's pretty much it for comparisons let's now get down to the final thoughts 
Let's now get down to the final thoughts for the Transformers Legacy Wave 3 Deluxe Class Crankcase. Starting the remote, I think overall looks super cool. I'm really glad there's so many new molded pieces. Typically, when there's a repaint or a third version of mold, it's pretty much just a straight-up repaint, and there's no changes at all. There's a brand new accessory, tons of new molded pieces, and actually a pretty cool gimmick. I actually really do like how the grill can become a blaster, which is pretty cool. And if you want, so you can store the blaster on the grill in the remote. Typically, that storage is really only for the car, but if you want to, you can do like that. I think it looks pretty cool. It also does come with the same single pistol that came with skids and burnout. I kind of wish this figure came with three accessories. Unfortunately, it only comes with two. The other two versions of this mold, uh, skids and burnout, came with three. So I do think they're kind of cheaping out on uh, this figure a little bit, I do think. But that's a very minor complaint. And as you can see, there's actually a really cool new addition with some uh, cool cannons behind his head, which I actually did not notice was part of this figure until I got it in hand. I never saw it before, so that's a cool little surprise um Although I think the tolerance is wise, the joints are pretty tight. Articulation is pretty good. There's actually quite a bit of customization. You can have the doors, you know, folded uh, like this, or you can flip them out. The cans, of course, there's a little bit of uh, articulation in those. You can have them angled more up or down, which is pretty cool. So there's quite a bit of nice customization you can position this figure in. Overall articulation, pretty much the exact same thing as uh, skids and burnouts. Um, Actually, there is a newly added joint in the arm because the entire shoulder is a completely brand new sculpt. There's actually a butterfly joint, so you can get this figure in some pretty dynamic poses. Getting down to, of course, transformation, um, pretty much of similar to uh, skids. Actually, the entire leg transformation is, I would say, the exact same thing. The only difference, it would, I would say, is really the uh, whole back piece is a little bit different, and of course, the arms are slightly different as well. But mostly, I would say, if you have those figures, you get uh, the transformation down pretty quickly. I got it down pretty quickly. Getting down to the car mode, I think overall looks pretty cool. Um, people did complain about the whole gap where the head is, but that's actually due to transformation. There needs to be some clearance for the head to flip um, both ways for transformation into the car and robot. So that is kind of a part of the figure. That doesn't bother me that much. What I do and am bothered by is... Um there's a big hinge, ugly hinge or joints, or the doors fold, which I think they could have done better. Um, I really wish they had done that so like they did uh, with Skids. Skids and Burnout had no big, ugly hinge where the doors will fold. There's, of course, actually folded forward. His fold up in the car or for transformation. But I still think they could have made that hinge a lot less big because it's really big, really ugly, and it's kind of sticking out. Again, nothing to not get this figure over, but I think I, I know they can do better because of course, this is the third version of the mold, so I know they can do a uh, different version of door for that. I know they d wouldn't have to do an opening door, you know, uh, out instead of up just to have a better hinge. I think they could have done that. I think they were probably just low on budget for it. There's actually quite a bit of new molded pieces, I said before. There's actually some canisters on the side of the car, which you can see on the side of the leg there. Um, the whole uh, sort of grill blaster gimmick, I think, is actually pretty cool. You can um, have it as a blaster in the vehicle mode if you want to, but it does kind kind of cover up some uh, detail from the the, uh, the robot mode, so you kind of want to put it there just to make it feel more like a car. It does seem a bit odd not covering it there, but overall I actually really do like all the really nice details on there as well. There's like a hook, a wire, the whole headlight design actually looks super cool, and I'm actually really glad with the um, uh, tire design. It looks, it looks actually super realistic. I'm not really sure if they've done this design before, but if you look closely, there's actually little indents on the tires, all four of them, and it actually looks pretty really realistic to an actual tire today. Unfortunately, the front wheels are a mushroom peg, but you can easily get over that. That's kind of a standard thing for deluxes nowadays. And, uh, of course, the main complaint that people had with the skids mold is still present on this one. There's quite a bit of waffling or emptiness in the legs, which that never bothered me. Yes, emptiness, I would prefer for it not to be on a figure, but I've kind of used to it by now. I've never really judged a figure on the hollowness. I typically judge it, of course, on the accessories, the tightness of the joints, and, of course, um, both the modes. I never really judge it on the... Um the waffling or the emptiness because it's kind of a standard thing. But overall, I highly do recommend this figure. Typically, of course, some people just never buy repaints, just don't do them, which honestly, I think um, to some people, if you're not huge, you know, big time collectors, you just get a figure every once in a while, this might seem like a brand new figure to you. Yes, it is a remold, um, repaint, but it, um, in some ways, it kind of seems like a completely brand new figure. I actually did not notice, I distinctly remember when this was, was um, when Wave 3 was first revealed, I did not put the 
dots together, I did not connect them. I was like, wait, this is a repaint of skids. And I realized that much later. I was like, oh my gosh, it's a rema uh, repaint remold. So that's how you know it's um, a pretty big change of a figure. So I do highly recommend it. I actually got this from uh, a toy store, not sponsored. Um, I will leave a link in the description down below where you can get it. Again, not sponsored, just trying to help you out. Big Red Twister, and it was not overpriced at all. It was like $25. Of course, shipping is always included, but I highly suggest you get it. Hope you enjoyed this review. Let me know what you think of this figure in the comment section down below. And what is your favorite version of the small skids, burnouts, or crankcase? Not really sure. If I ever um, pick my favorite, I'll let you know. And of course, several reviews coming soon. Quite a bit, actually. Some Shadow Glass figures, some uh, more Wave 3 of Legacy, and actually the PulseCon exclusive review will be coming out as well so make sure you stay tuned on the channel for that and that's pretty much it so i'll see you